say a little good lie. No excuses. I got no excuses. Yeah, I got no excuses. Yeah, I got no excuses. Yeah, yo, I got no. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be your right man. We're gonna do it. Just do it. I got no excuses. Do I need to speak loud? Hello. As loud as I can. Technology is wonderful. All right, so I'll just scream. It's, it's all good. Hello. It's got a green light. It says vocal one on it. Hello, hello. All right, I'll talk loud. Who is excited about Youth Weekend next weekend? Who's registered for Youth Weekend next weekend? Yes, you are. So we are like in the around 35-ish people registered, something like that, as of yesterday. And so what we're going to do right now, before we get started, is we're going to give our first giveaway of Youth Weekend. And so if you were in the first 25 to register, your name got put into this. And so we're going to be giving away a gift card. So Nate's going to go ahead and put us on the screen. And we're going to pick a name. Starbucks gift card. That's from Tyler. So congratulations. And so we have so much stuff to give away next weekend. Uh, we have gift cards. We're going to have a grand prize drawing for here both nights for the Nintendo Switch Lite. Uh, we have shirts to give away. We have all types of stuff. Really looking forward to it. Now, I've told you for the last few weeks that we are going to have a guest speaker. You guys ready to hear, find out who our guest speaker is? Woo no? Okay. Yeah. Now, we, we searched far and wide for this guest speaker. We broke our budget to get this guest speaker. This is someone who, unless you're in eighth grade, you have yet to hear speak to you. Now, eighth graders, you have heard this person speak at an event if you were at our winter retreat a few years ago. And so our guest speaker for next week is none other than your, your senior, bleh, not a senior pastor. <laughs> Your high school pastor, Tyler. All right, so Tyler's going to be speaking for us next week. Um, we did try to get, he is like number three on our list. Uh, don't tell him I said that. He's not in here, is he? Um, we tried to get a couple others. One of them, his wife is having a baby, and so they couldn't be here. And so, uh, got to watch what I say now. Uh, so, yeah, we will be having Tyler Morgan speak to you guys next weekend at our youth weekend. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I know that, like I said, eighth graders heard him at winter retreat two years ago. You guys have not really had the opportunity to hear him. And so we, our topic, our, our theme for Youth Weekend for our middle school ministry is all in. All in. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11 and chapter 12 over the course of the weekend. So super excited about it. If you're not registered, there's still time. Go on the website, register. Like I said, we'll be doing more giveaways and having a lot of fun time. So if you have any questions, let me know. All right? Sound good? Yes? Are we excited? Yes. Joe, are you excited for the high school one this weekend? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so let me pray for you guys, and they're going to lead us in worship tonight. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we have the opportunity just to come here tonight, God, and just worship you and, and spend time learning about you. God, I pray um, that you are with us tonight. God, I pray as um, we go into this event next weekend, Lord, that we just all come with the right mindset. God, that we come just expecting a time of awesome fellowship and learning and just having a great time. And God, we're so thankful for all the blessings in our life. We're thankful that you sent your son down to die on the cross for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
You guys can stand. From the darkness, I call your name. Into darkness, your mercy. You called me out, lifted me up. How great is your love! You bore my weakness, you took my shame. Buried my words in fields of grace. You bore me out, lifted me up. How great is your love.
can control what tomorrow will bring. Like the sun in the shadow. Tonight in the sermon series that we have, 
But before we start, I just want to talk really quick about Youth Weekend. If you guys are not signed up, I highly, highly encourage you to. Uh, the youth group years were hands down the best of my life so far. And um, I can say, and Alex can probably vouch for this, that some youth group events, like those memories, just memories I'm always going to share. And God worked through those uh, like nothing else. But I want to I want to share um, one story in particular. Uh, in seventh grade, I was like really worried to share the gospel with people. And you know, when, when you very first start doing that, it can be hard just to go up to somebody and like, lay down the entire gospel to them, right? So actually this story involves Alex. I invited him to summer camp the summer of our seventh grade year. And Alex ended up being saved, going to school to be a pastor, and he did the group. So um, I, I just encourage you to not underestimate what God can do through a weekend. All I did was send him a text. I said, hey, you want to come to summer camp? He was like, sounded weird, but sure, I'm in. And then like, God did the rest. So don't underestimate the power um, that the Lord has, just the way that he can transform lives um, through events like these. I know Kyle and, and the ministry team have worked really hard at putting this together. I know it's going to be a great weekend, so uh, be praying for it. Be inviting your friends, and it's going to be a great time. If you guys want to open up to Romans 12, uh, 15, actually, into Romans 8, that's where we're going to be spending a lot of our time, but we're going to kind of establish the topic first in Romans 15. Uh, we're in the sermon series, as you see, called In the Dark. And tonight, we're going to be talking about how do we find hope in the darkness, and how do we know that we have this hope in the darkness, and what does that mean for us? And so, if you want to pick up with me in verses 12 and 13 of chapter 15. And again, Isaiah said, The root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule, to arise, the, <laughs> the root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Let's pray with me. Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. We thank you that the weather here at tonight can just meet and fellowship and worship you here at church. Father, we just we thank you for the hope that we have in you. Uh, Father, like that song says, we have nothing unless you come. And so, Father, we pray and we thank you for the fact that you did come and you did save us and we worship we thank you for that, God. I just, I want to pray over Youth Weekend. God, I just pray that uh, you would be there, that you would move, and that students' lives would be changed. And God, we just know that we have big expectations. We know that you are a big God. So, Father, we just thank you and we praise you for all you are tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. So, just really quick before we flip over to Romans 8, there's a few things I want to point out here. Um, when I talked about the root of Jesse, just to sum it up, we don't have time to go into a lot of backstory. But we're talking about Jesus here. It says that Jesus, uh, he arises to rule the Gentiles. And then in verse 13, it says, May the God of hope. And if you're someone that likes to write in your Bible or underline or highlight, whatever it is, I encourage you to underline that right there. May the God of hope. I, I, I think sometimes we can get really caught up when it comes to you know being anxious or being worried. But we need to remember that the God that we serve is the God of hope. It says, may he fill you with all the joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Not just that we barely scrape by, not just that we do well enough, but it says that we would abound in hope. This is what God wants for us. And it says right there before, joy and peace. Now Paul isn't saying that we're going to have that all the time, but that's what hope is all about. It's not always feeling joyful or always you know, having that thought, but it's that we know it's going to get better because we know that we have Christ within us. So if you would flip over with me to Romans chapter 8, as we can spend the rest of the night. Uh, if you guys haven't read this chapter, I just, I highly, highly recommend it. It is one that has really shaped my life and really, um, I think God has used this maybe more than any other passage of scripture in the whole Bible. Um, and so I, I encourage you just to memorize portions of this or maybe just read it on your own tonight. We're not going to read all of it tonight because we don't have quite the time to dig into everything that's here. But we're going to pick up in verse 31 if you want to go with me there. What then shall we say to these things? All right, we're going to stop right there. We need to realize what things are we talking about. There's three things I want to point out. The first is what Paul says in verse 1 of Romans 8. There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What Paul is saying is that there is no punishment left for us. 
that every time we commit a sin, it deserves to be punished. And because God is such a good and righteous and holy and just God, he cannot let those sins go unpunished. And because he is so good and awesome and mighty, even the littlest of sins that we think that we think might be little in our own mind, those are huge transgressions against him. Even the little lies and the times we cheat, the times we steal from people, those sins are huge. And they deserve to be punished. I could spend forever in hell paying off my sin, and I would never come close. Nobody would. That is how deep and intense of a problem that sin is. But for us, for the believers, all of that wrath that deserves to go to us, all the punishment that we deserve has been poured out under Christ on the cross. And like Paul says here, there is no condemnation left. Jesus says on the cross, it is finished. The price has been paid. So if you are in Christ here tonight, there is no more punishment left for you. Christ has purchased you. He has bought you with such a high price. There is nothing we can do to out sin the cross of Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation left for those who are in Christ Jesus. And look at verse 18 with me. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be re revealed in us. I think, um, I don't know about you guys, but I know that when I am dealing with suffering, whether that just be like mental stuff or thinking about what's happening in the world or family, all those different issues that you know cause us to be down, it can seem like that's the only place to be. It can be very hard to look up and to think about better times. But what Paul is saying here is that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that's going to be revealed. I think what we're, what we're kind of scratching out here is that heaven is going to be greater than we can ever imagine. The joy that is waiting for us at the end of the road is better and is greater and is, I mean, we can't even begin to fathom what heaven is going to be like in the presence of our God. The joy there is not even worth comparing to the things that we feel here on earth. We need to keep our eyes up and keep looking and remember what the goal is and that we will feel everlasting joy forever. There will be no tears, no crying, no shame, no oppression, nothing but joy and peace in worshiping God. We need to keep our eyes up. And the final point is in verse 28 and he says, and we know that these and that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. If you are a church kid, I'm sure you've heard this many, many times. It's quoted all the time. And I think growing up, I heard it so much that it started to kind of lose its value. You, you just kind of hear this over and over and over again. But how many times do we really stop and think about that? Everything that happens to us, all the bad things, God is going to use for good. He is going to work all of those for good for those who are in him. I mean, if we, if we really just stop and think about that, the impact that that should have on our suffering, that even when we don't understand why it's happening, even when it makes no sense, God is going to use that. He does not waste anything. He does not uh, just cause us to suffer for no reason. He has a purpose, and he will work it together for our good and for his glory. With that being said, let's pick it up here in verses 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who has been raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And every time I read that, I just get fired up. I mean, that is just a passage of scripture that God has used in my life countless times. And those 
those nine or ten verses in particular, I really encourage you guys, if you want, just to memorize those and just to put those on your heart. I mean, even the second line here in 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? It talks about later on how he is at the right hand interceding for us. I mean, how can we picture about that? Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he is sovereign. Everything is in his control. He is over everything. He is interceding for us. Christ is fighting for us on our behalf as we speak. How awesome is that? How comforting is that? How much hope should that bring us? That God is on our side. He has paid the price for us, and he will not stop. It talks about in Philippians how he who started the good work in you will bring it to completion. It keeps on, and it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? The answer to that question is no, nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love that is in Jesus. Not sadness, not depression, not anxiety, not struggles we go with on the day-to-day. -day. We have hope in Jesus. He will finish what he has started. In 37, it says, no, and all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. There's another version that says, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. There's two, two parts of this. One, we need to know that we can conquer our sadness and, and, the, and our darkness. But two, not without Christ. If we try to get out of the darkness without Christ, we will fail every single time. It doesn't stop after saying we are conquerors. It's because of Christ that we can be. And if we try to do it on our own, we will fail every time. I know that when I um, can be in a dark space, it can be really easy just to lean on our own understanding and to not turn to God and just to try to work it all out ourselves. But it will not work. We cannot do it without Christ. We were not meant to survive without Jesus. And then finally, it talks about in 38 to 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from Jesus. If you are a follower in Christ tonight, there is nothing you can do to separate yourself from Jesus. You cannot lose your salvation. You cannot have too many sins. He knew every sin you are going to commit before the world was ever even created. And he had no second thoughts about dying for you. He had no second thoughts about buying you and by taking your wrath onto him. Christ loves us with such a deep, deep love. That is our hope right there. Our hope is not in the world. It's not in ourselves. It can't be in anything else besides Jesus. If you put your hope in anything other than Christ, it will fail. And we know this. We know that's true. Every time we try to depend on someone or depend on something else to bring us hope, it will fail every time. Christ is the only way to have hope, everlasting hope. He has purchased us, and he will keep us, and he loves us. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy that you have so uh, freely given us, Father. Even when we were sinners, God, you went to the cross to die and to purchase us back from our sins. And we just thank you and we praise you for that, God. I pray that you'd be with us as we go to our grow groups and that you'd be just the center of conversation on that, Father. We would just, and that you would be glorified by the conversations we have tonight. In your name we, in your name we pray. Amen. You guys are dismissed. All right, guys, give him a hand. We'll go to grow groups. Uh, we'll be combined up. You guys can head out this way because we're done a little bit early, which is good. Um, and so we'll, you know, the one girls, one guys group like we've been doing the last few weeks. So head on out and go to your Grover group. Sky was never and courageous inch